Brandon Moreno wasn't aggressive enough. But T-City Brian Ortega, he was very aggressive. And he got the win. We're thankful for that one. One and one in the final two. But we'll get into this and the rest of the night. Last night at UFC Mexico. Next. Broadcasting live from an undisclosed location. This is the community. MMA with your host, Chris Cross. Yes! Yes! Let's go, baby! Dana White Privilege. Let's go, baby! 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 Yeah, so it went down last night at UFC Mexico City, aka UFC Mexico, aka UFC Fight Night. It was on. The Mexicans were live and in full effect and a lot of Mexican fighters won because I know our record was superb last night until the main event (laughs) absolutely superb we're going to get into all that but first I wanted to get you right to the co-main event because last night we saw something spectacular with Yair Rodriguez and Brian T. City Ortega who was getting dominated in the after the first I mean in the first round it was over there's no way Brian Ortega can win. And then he comes back. Check this out. All right, here we go around three. I mean, just two complete opposite rounds. Jair Rodriguez dominating round one. Coming out striking already. But then Ortega with the ground game in round two. Oh, he's going right back to it here quickly. And he drives Jair back into the fence. And man, Ortega... If he can just continue with this, it seems like he just dominate the fight because Yair doesn't have an answer. Now Yair goes down. Wow. And he gets him down in the first 30 seconds. This is going to be a long time on the ground if he's going to get through this. But already Ortega looking for submissions. Oh, my gosh. If he can finish this thing, it would be crazy. I mean, what a comeback from round one. Oh, and he cinches it up. He cinches it up. <clears throat> Oh my goodness, that's it, that's it, it's over, yes, and a little controversy there between him and the the ref, but man, Brian Ortega, impressive, I mean the guy hasn't been in the octagon in 19 months from the uh, shoulder injury, then he's jumping up and down before the fight and rolls his ankle, looked terrible in round one. And just went to the to the takedowns and control time and all that. And gets the job done. Now he's partying. Yeah, so Brian Ortega came through last night for us. And at that point, we're rolling, man. We're 10-1. I'm very highly upset about the one loss. I feel like it, it shouldn't even have been a loss. We should be 11-0. But it wouldn't matter because uh, Moreno would fall. And we'll get into that in a moment. I should just let you know that I was very sick over the weekend. Not my normal self. Got sick like early Friday morning. So if I sound, and this is Saturday night, I'm still not back to normal. Still not back to normal today. But, you know, if I sound a little watered down, that's what's going on. But this is Moreno versus Roy Vall. Uh, Great fight. They came to a final decision. Oh, it looks like we don't have that up. Well, we can get that real quick. But, yeah, I mean, this fight came down to a final decision and Moreno just wasn't aggressive enough to get the win Moreno and Roy Vall awaiting the decision I don't I don't know man this thing could really go either way but Roy Vall really came on strong the last three rounds ended up leading 128 to 99 in significant strikes 148 to 108 in total strikes control time was Moreno though on three takedowns nearly three minutes didn't really do much with it, but was able to gain a little control time. Head strikes though, is really where it's at. 85 to 49 for Roy Vall. And I think that's why our pick is going to be wrong tonight. But you never know. Sitting here at 10 and 1 on the night. The one fight we lost shouldn't even have been a loss. But we also won two or three we shouldn't have got either, so. Hey, that's why I say anything can happen. 
Both guys kind of pacing right now. Awaiting the decision. And you know what that means. Yep. Now we've all looking mad already. He said, I'm going to get... Seemingly like to have that look on his face like, don't rob me in in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, so here we go. Here we go. Or if all wants to make sure that he gets the decision. Split. 48-47, Roy Vall. 49-46, Moreno. Oh, my goodness. 48-47, split decision. Wow. Brandon Roy Vall gets the win by split decision. And Moreno can't believe it. But uh, as much as I hate to lose that one, because we have Moreno winning, Oh, it was a close fight. I don't know, man. Yeah, so a lot of people scratching their heads today. I don't know. You know, it's a split decision, but it seemed to me like, you know, toward the end of the fight, Roy Vall was taken over. So, can't be mad at the decision, really. Moreno could have done more. Surprising 49-46 on the other judges' scorecard, though, the other way. So, and here you go. Last night, man, 10-2. and two. Look at all those Ws. Only lost Matush Mendonca, who actually should have won that fight. And then Moreno. See, and it, these are the times I tell you, like, it's a great night because we're 10-2, and two, but we lose the main event, and now we drop to 3-3. Three and three. So it's like a great night on one end and a terrible night on the other. So fully expecting Moreno to get the win in Mexico. It didn't turn out that way. Surprisingly, it didn't turn out that way. So we fall to 3-3, three and three, man. And that's not good. It's not good at all. But, you know, we'll have to take it. We'll have to eat it right now. But we pull away a little bit in the win column, right? So now we're 43 and 29 overall, so that's big. And we'll take that all day. All day. Now as we jump into uh, the Q&A, you can't see the name. UFC definitely needs somebody to inform the viewers what happened tonight because that was upsetting. Talking about Raul Rosas Jr. Oh, you know, all of a sudden, Raul Rosas Jr. and Ricky Tertius are supposed to be up in fight four. And next thing you know, you got Daniel Zell Huber walking to the octagon, and that's fight three. So no one knew what happened. I started scanning and quickly found out that he was sick and tried to break that news out to everyone on the channel as quickly as possible. Uh, but yeah, it, they might have said something on the on the broadcast, but because I, I kind of didn't pay attention for five minutes and came back and... Then that's when I saw how Huber was out there. I'm like, what's going on? Another one weighs in. Bro, Ricky is a is a ground fighter. He knows how to defend from there. But I still choose Rosas Jr. Yeah, and we're going to see that fight this week. Anyway, Hamza Chamaya, Bo Jackson's back. You want to give title shots away to fighters who never fought at the weight class. You want to pick and choose who gets a title shot. Chamaya has been passed by a welterweight rankings and no wins for middleweights. And you want him to fight. Uh, for the light heavyweight championship. You're nothing but a casual. Yeah, I want him to fight for the light heavyweight belt. Of course. Because I believe he's already the champ. A casual changes their mind from week to week. A diehard doesn't change their mind in three years. You think, like, I've been saying this for three or four years now. And there's others on here like Kenneth Bruner and all others that could vouch for that. We've been saying this for years, man. This is no casual stuff. Another way in on Yair versus Ortega. I'm with you, Brian T. City Ortega, all day. Let's go, Brian. Yeah, you got the win. Back to Hamza. If it was true, the UFC would know it. And they would offer him a fight at UFC 300. There's no way the UFC doesn't know uh, such an important detail. Speaking of the, the visa troubles for Hamza. Yeah, but I'm, I'm sure that they were trying to work it out. They obviously know what the, what the, the landscape better than we do. All we're trying to do is report on bits and pieces. The UFC knows everything. You know, sometimes we stay, say stuff that's, we're, we're getting breaking news and this and that, and the UFC's probably sitting back like, that's not even what's going on, but okay. You know, 
That, that's the way the game is played. But the reports are that they were trying to get Hamza in there for 300 and just couldn't work it out. Who's this Calvin Wayne and says maybe next time on Moreno, yeah. Back to T-City, Ortega. Coming off injuries and a loss, impressive pick. Yeah, I mean, but listen, the thing is, is I like Yaya Rodriguez, but Brian Ortega, like, takes a, a, a pounding and keeps on going, and he wins. Brian Frederick says Moreno fought not to lose and got burned. Yeah, he got beat. He got beat. Yep. Got Crumble coming in saying 300 takes place during Ramadan, and he said multiple times, that's why he won't fight on that card. Yeah, I mean, but these fighters, when they know it's not going to happen, then they come out with all these things. And I like Hamza, but, I, you know, you got to take it with a grain of salt. Aqua Pros, Hamza versus Izzy was fake news. Yeah, and I'm sure it was. There's a lot of things coming out, you know, that's that's not necessarily true, that's being reported on, that someone said, you know, all this type of stuff by major news outlets. And it's just the way, it's just the way it goes, man. And some of it's coming from the fighters. So, you know, and then the opposite comes from the UFC. And then you got to make a decision on this stuff. It's just wild, man. It's just, it's part of it. It's it's the way that the game is played. It's fun to watch. Speaking of fun to watch, UFC Mexico was wild last night. The fans were crazy in attendance very early. Fight two, I remember the crowd was roaring. Couldn't believe it. The crowd was roaring in fight two. Like, this is why it's exciting when the UFC goes over overseas. And I told you with all this Hamza stuff too, factoring in, the UFC might start have to go overseas a lot more. There's other countries that are going to let these guys fight. You don't have to necessarily have the title and have to fight in America. Like, we're not invincible when it comes to this global sport. The UFC, you know, if they want Hamza to be a champ and he can't come into the U.S., then guess what? Guess what's going to happen? <laughs> they're they're going to be booking fights, you know, overseas a lot quicker than they probably not necessarily wanted to or didn't want to, but, you know, they got to start doing. Just the landscape is changing. So the UFC is going to play by the landscape. It's a business. It's predictable in a good way because money is the motivation. And that's just the way it is. And Hamza is going to be a moneymaker when he wins a title. Please believe it. And that might have to be overseas, but it's going to happen. But listen, we just wanted to get in real quick and get this to you. What happened last night, we're going to be coming back for USC Vegas 87, Rosenstrike uh, versus Shamil Gadsiev. Then you got Raul Rosas Jr. and Ricky Tercios fitting into that main card, squeezing in there. So from UFC Mexico, bumped to this week. So listen, it's going to be a great week of action. The fights start early. And uh, these are always the toughest weeks for me because things are going on early in the day on the weekend. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But I'm looking forward to it. UFC Vegas 87 is on deck. We'll see you in a couple days. For now, hope you have a great day and God bless. As always, peace. Mm -hmm.